me or good afternoon or good evening for everyone. My name is Juan Weilin. I'm a medical doctor from Brazil. It has been 28 years since my medical graduation. I have six specialties, the first being infectious disease, though for the last 23 years I've been working with medical acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine in my own clinic in Brazil. I've been working in worldwide medical conference, also emphasizing to treat the patient as a whole in the energy point of view and not only the patient's symptoms. Today, I will present a study entitled Treating Patients with Chakras Energy Deficiencies and Coronavirus Infection. Coronavirus is a novel viral infection which first appeared in Wuhan, China on November and December of 2019. And today, it has more than 22 million, um, no, 22,000 million infected people and more than 700,000 patient deaths until today uh, uh, with coronavirus infection. Several studies have been developed with the aim of better comprehend, prevent, and treat coronavirus infection. However, the majority of these studies are focused on the pathogen SARS-CoV-2. And this is this study was based on Hippocrates' oath that the first oath is it's more important to know what sort of a person has a disease than what sort of a disease a person has. In other of his quote, he also said that it is extremely important to consider other scientific gains and traditions within medicine prior to the knowledge we have nowadays. And for this reason, in my studies, I choose to use traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine knowledge to try to explain the process of coronavirus infection on the energy point of view. The concept of health and well-being in traditional Chinese medicine is mainly associated with the balance of these four energies in Yang, Qi, and blood. Um, uh, for yin and yang to, to flow in the, in the body, there is uh, that need, that qi and blood energy. And, these are, uh, and the imbalance of these, these four energies will induce the formation of different kinds of disease, such as emotional and physical um, development of physical sign and symptoms. And um, the lack of energy of each of these components uh, could be inducing the formation of internal heat. Internal heat is, is considered the formation of the inflammatory process in Western medicine. And if you have inflammatory process in Western medicine, it means that the patient has these imbalances in the energy point of view. To diagnose these energy imbalances, there are questions that I usually do to the patients to see if there is some imbalance between these energies. And if the, ba the, the patient have a daily bowel movement, this means that he, he doesn't have blood deficiency. If he have uh, um, only um, not, uh, not every day bowel movement, this means blood deficiency. And if the patient has excessive sweating during the day, this means a symptom of qi deficiency. And if the patient feels cold, mainly in the extremities in the body, this is a sign of young deficiency. If the patient feels hot, mainly in the extremities, this could be a sign of indeficiency. And if the pain feels dry mouth, bleeding gums, bad breath, acne or redness in the skin, abdominal pain, microematuria, or itching, this is, could be a sign of heat retention or is a sign of inflammatory process in the body.
As these concepts may be, may be hard to conceptualize for a Western medicine physician, I use the metaphor of the tree to facilitate this comprehension. On this slide, you can see a tree-like figure. The tree has a trunk with several branches, and each branch represents um, one medical specialty, and each leaf coming out of each branch represents the symptoms and disease of each specialty. The leaves and the branches are the visible part and the object of study and practice in Western medical profession because of the curriculum offered in the medical schools around the world. Coronavirus infection presents symptoms on the most variety of specialties. It can appear as the flu, fever, cough, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, diarrhea, dermatitis, encephalitis, renal insufficiency, conjunctivitis, anosmia, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or respiratory insufficiency, etc. In wet in Western medicine, each of these symptoms are treated by different medical specialties. But the, in this metaphor of the tree, proposed that in traditional Chinese medicine, the energy imbalances that in the root of the tree leads to different signs and symptoms on the leaf level. And the functioning of these energy imbalances will be the the focus of this study today. Everything in the world is formed by energy, including the human body. What we can see with the naked eye system and organs, system and organs is materialized energy and what is on the root of the tree is not materialized energy that is the yin and qian blood energies that I mentioned before. In my presentation today, I will focus on the root level not visible by the naked eye. In traditional Chinese medicine reasoning, when treating the root, we can treat all the symptoms and disease at the same time. As in coronavirus infection, I'm focusing on the treatment of this root, treating all the symptoms and signs of coronavirus infection, but not treating only the, the symptom, each symptom, but treating the root. We can treat all the, the evolution of coronavirus infection at the same time. And the root of the tree represents the theory of the five elements and yin yang yang. Traditional Chinese medicine sees the individual as a whole, considering the influence of the external pathogenic factors and internally are the emotions and the externally the, the external pathogenic factors such as cold, wind, heat, dryness, and humidity that could cause the energy imbalances. Yin and yang are two opposite and complementary forces that exist in our world, in everything, including the human body. A possible example is day and night, man and woman, good and bad, etc. Traditional Chinese medicine uses the balance of these two energies as the main cornerstone for the treatment of all sorts of symptoms and disease, and the balance of yin and yang determines health in traditional Chinese medicine. Another theory on the root of the tree is the five elements theory, which explains the functioning of the nature and the interconnection between the massive organs inside the body, on contrary of what is done in Western medicine. Because Western medicine only treats uh, the organs isolated, but in traditional Chinese medicine, the internal organs are interconnected by by the five element theory in the um, um, generation cycle, earth uh, generation, uh, er, um, fire generation generates earth, earth generates metal, metal generates water, water generates wood, and wood generates fire again. And each of these organs are represented by one massive organ that the heart, spleen, lung, kidney, and liver.
On the theory of the five elements, the elements are fire, earth, metal, water, and wood, and they are represented by these organs that I mentioned before. And they are generated by the control cycle, the, the generating cycle. And in this, uh, each, each um, element in the five element theory, they have, um, they have uh, an external sensory organ that they command, such as wood that is liver commands the eye that is an external sensory organ the fire is represented by the heart it commands the tongue and the earth is represented by the spleen that commands the mouth and the metal represents the lung organ and there is response uh, there is an external sensory organ that's nose is responsible for the sense of a smell that is compromised in the coronavirus infection patient that has anosmia. And the water element is commanded by the kidney and is, is responsible for the hearing sense. In my study, I consider the five massive organs of the five elements theory as corresponding to the seven chakras of Ayurvedic medicine, as you can see in this slide. In the first chakra uh, is represented by the wood element and it represents the liver. The second chakra is the water element, is kidney. The third is the fire represented by the heart. And the fourth is the uh, metal, it's wrong here, and represented by the lung. And the fifth chakra is the earth represented by the spleen. Here is the memory and concentration. Here is the spiritual chakra that is the organ that is responsible is kidney and liver respectively. Mm, in the five element theory, each organ is responsible for the functioning of the external sensory organ and the orientation climate in, an, in organ and young organ or refined tissue, color, taste, and voice. Therefore, the level of the energy on the root level is associated with the level of energy on the chakras, as you can see in this slide. I can, I, sorry. Um, with the use of this tool, it's possible to integrate the idea of energy in traditional Chinese medicine and in Western medicine, because as energy measurement vary among different doctors, as a measurement is usually done, analyze the arterial pulse of the patient. The radiesthesia was a way of showing the level of energy of the patient. The procedure of radiesthesia is done using a crystal pendulum. And this pendulum is placed in front of each person's chakras. The pendulum may stay still or may clockwise or counterclockwise. These movements are classified in a scale of 1 to 8, 1 being the minimal level of energy and 8 the normal level. If the pendulum does not move, the patient has no energy on the evaluated chakra. And if it, it if moves clockwise, it will classify it from 1 to 8 according to the intensity of the movement. And when the movement is counterclockwise, maybe external interference and has to be studied individually. And I developed a study in which I analyze uh, among a thousand patients in my clinic from 2015 to 2020. And from this patient, I analyzed the file of 409 patients from ages varying among two to 70 years of old patients. And in this slide, we are showing the patient uh, divided into ages from 0 to 19, 20 to 59, and 60 to 89. And I show me in this slide that majority of the patient 
from both three groups, the majority of the patient doesn't have any energy in any of the chakras. This means that the first chakra that corresponds to the liver, liver doesn't have any energy. And the kidney too. The third is the heart, doesn't have energy. The fourth is the lung. The fifth is the spleen. And uh, this means that the internal organs before, before the coronavirus infection are in the lowest level of energy. And energy means, means immunity in traditional Chinese medicine. When you, have, you don't have energy inside the body, it means that your immunity are in the lowest level. And the, in traditional Chinese medicine, they, they explain that to... To prevent the occurrence of infection, you have the Zen Qi. The Zen Qi is the Qi energy that is responsible for the protection of the body against the external pathogenic factors and from the external infections such as virus, bacteria, fungus infection. And this Zen Qi is produced by the fourth chakra, that's the lung, and the fifth, that is the spleen. This is, uh, it's responsible for the absorption of nutrients and formation of blood. And here is the lung, is responsible for the respiratory system, and that is producing the energy for the, to distribute uh, among other cells, organs, and tissues in the body. And if these organs are in the lowest level, they, the Zen Qi of this patient uh, are very low, and they, this means that the immunity of this patient are in the lowest level, and that is why they are having uh, such infections, such as coronavirus infection, in these extremely... Um, um they are the 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 dissemination of this disease is very rapid and very uh, among these person that is um, very weak ah in this slide i'm showing that the most common uh, western medicine diagnosis is anxiety depression among the adolescents and among the young adults is anxiety and headaches, and among the older elderly is anxiety and knee pain. And the, you can see that this most common, common diagnosis is not in the, um, how can I say, in the um, high risks of coronavirus infection patients, but they are also risk for acquiring coronavirus infection because all of them doesn't have energy and doesn't have immune system in, in uh, a very, uh, working properly. Here is an, uh, the same chart, but we are showing the, the most uh, common diagnosis in, in Chinese medicine in the energy point of view. Among the adolescents is common in and young deficiency, in and blood deficiency. Among the young adults, it's more common to see in deficiency and in and young deficiency. Among the elderly patient, it's more common to see in deficiency. And secondly, in an internal heat, and in young in internal heat. In the elderly patient, it's more common to see the formation of an inflammatory process before the acquisition of coronavirus infection. That's why they are having a more severe evolution because they have an internal energy, the imbalances before this infection. I am ready. In these two groups represent the total of the analyzed patient on the research demonstrated that more than 90% of the patients had no energy in their chakras. In this study also describing the value of the external pathogenic factors within the body. On this study is stated that in traditional Chinese medicine, epidemic disease are considered to be caused by external pathogenic factors that 
mainly caused by the invasion of cold and wind, being called cold damage disorders. After the Qin Dynasty, in, in the epidemics more classified as cold damage disorders and warm disorders. And the uh, massive and rapid transmission of a pandemic is related to the cycle of transformation of the five elements, fire to earth, earth to metal, metal to water, water to wood, and wood to, to fire again. And this movement creates transmission of the external pathogenic factor. In traditional Chinese medicine literature, epidemic disease have different definitions in different literature studies. The study entitled Climate, Environment, and Epidemic Febrile Disease, a few from Chinese medicine, defines the cause of epidemic disease as associated with pestilential qi, which is caused by an imbalance on the environment linked to pollution and electromagnetic waves. Pestilential qi as naked to the naked eye only being perceived on their effect on the body, entering the body through nose and mouth with great relevance and contagious power. They diffuse widely and quickly between people, not caused by abnormal, abnormal season condition, and the emergent is unpredictable. Of course, the research I did in my clinic is just a small sample of energy level, a small number of patients, but it is possible that this lack of energy is present on the majority of people in the world because a talk from Thomas Cohen states that coronavirus may be related to 5G and the 5G technology started to be implemented in 2018 but all the electromagnetic waves are believed to harm energy. And it is possible that the 5G are related to the lack of energy of the chakras on the majority of the population, facilitating the situation that we are in nowadays. And the treatment in traditional Chinese medicine bases on syndrome differentiation and the treatment with TCM for infectious disease has several advantages. In traditional Chinese medicine, everything that comes from the external world, not being related to the internal energy, is called the external pathogenic factors. And coronavirus will be considered an external pathogenic factors invasion. And in the case of coronavirus, of our infections, according to traditional Chinese medicine, there will be three states of evolution of the invasion of these external pathogenic factors in the body. The first stage corresponds to the invasion of external pathogenic factor in the body, and the patient may present the following symptoms, such as fever, mild cold, dry cough, with left button accompanied by headache, body pain, and dry, dry pharynx. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's common the use of Chinese herbs for expelling this external pathogenic factor invasion. But in my clinic, I, may, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I use the treatment without necessity of using the China herbs for the uh, invasion of the external pathogenic factors, not the coronavirus infection, but they are difficult, uh, and these herbs are difficult to find in Brazil. I found tools in Chinese dietary counseling, acupuncture, and homeopathy, which have the same actions that the Chinese herbs would have. In the first phase, the intention is to try to spill these external pathogenic factors, staying inside home, not taking wind and cold, avoiding to drink cold beverages and eat food with cold energy, avoid to open the fridge or walk barefoot, because this will worsen the symptoms and the entrance of the external pathogenic factors in the body. And consume boiled and grilled food and drink warm or, or lukewarm water to eliminate the pathogenic factors through transpiration.
And it is also important to change the dry cloths after transpiring as the wet clothing may worsen the invasion of the external pathogenic factor in the patient's body. When not proper prompt treated, this external pathogenic factor which invaded the body can be internalized, leading to symptoms such as fe high fever, reddish complexion, chest pain, cough, thick sputum, and suffocation, abdominal distension, full belly, and constipation. The internalization of these external pathogenic factors leads to the heat formation that is the inflammatory process in a patient that could be possible have this internal heat before the coronavirus infection, as demonstrated on the, my previous slide. And the treatment on this phase is usually done for taking out this heat retention. Treating the heat retention may drop drastically the inflammatory process without using any anti-inflammatory medication or corticosteroids recommended nowadays. And the reason why I don't use the medication will be further explained. In this phase, the first step is to identify the energy imbalances of the patients. For example, the symptoms of shortness of breath or suffocation may be associated with an energy, deficient energy of the kidney meridian passing through the lung meridian. In traditional Chinese medicine, the symptoms in one organ may be, in fact, may be a reflection of the energy imbalance of other organ, as explained on the five element theory. One of the possible tools of the treatment in this case is to give the proper amount of water to the patient through drinking water or intra intravenous way. Proper hydration can improve the shortness of breath as it may be related to the energy of the deficiency of the kidney energy. In this second phase, beside the measure take, taking out the first phase, it's important to take out the heat retention. And as demonstrated on this research, the majority of the patient did not have any energy on the seven chakras, meaning that they probably have internal heat before acquiring coronavirus infection. In the third stage, the invasion of the external pathogenic factors achieved the massive organs in the five element theory, known as zanfu organs in traditional Chinese medicine. They are heart, spleen, lung, kidney, and liver. And the symptoms in this phase are fever, hotness in the palms and soles, irritability, delirium, skin eruption, and hemorrhage such as nosebleed and hematemesis. Western medicine considers this phase as the critical stage of infectious disease, and the primary pathologies include coagulation dysfunction and multi organ failure, such as sepsis and septic inflammatory res response syndrome. And the toxicity in TCM is consistent with endotoxin with respect to pathogenicity and the heat toxicity syndrome. Is it similar to endotoxemia caused by severe infection? Now we describe one case report of a patient with symptoms of coronavirus infection. And the patient was the MGDS. He was a 42 year old, was a lawyer in Brazil and worked as a teacher for the military in Sao Paulo, Brazil. A few months before the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak, I think in November 2019, the patient appeared to my clinic reporting symptoms of dizziness, feeling tired, difficulty with memory and concentration. He received measurement of the chakra, which appeared the minimum level one for six of the seven chakras, eight being the normal level, with the seven of the spiritual chakra was only the seven chakras was normal. And the chakras from one to six, all of them were in the lowest level. And he received treatment with Chinese dietary counseling, avoiding their products, cold beverages, raw food, and sweets.
And he was also advised to avoid frying, coconut, honey, chocolate, alcoholic beverages, and melted cheese because this food could increase the formation of internal heat that is the inflammatory process I explained before. And he also advised to avoid soda, coffee, and mati tea because these foods could worsen the kidney young deficiency or the, seven, or the second chakra. And he also received auricular acupuncture with apex ear bloodletting. The apex ear bloodletting is a procedure in Chinese medicine to take out this ret heat retention. And it's, uh, that is responsible for the inflammatory process. And I give homeopathy and high dilute medication according to the theory created by me entitled Constitutional Homeopathy of the Five Elements based on traditional Chinese medicine to replenish the energy of the five massive organs. And he was oriented to take single dose of these medications that will be described on different slides uh, after. And one single dose every three days, starting with 30 CH and increasing to 200 CH, 1000 CH and uh, 10,000 CH. As he worked in Sao Paulo, a few weeks later, he stopped attending the acupuncture sessions and several months later, on May 5th, the patient reappeared again. He reported that four days prior of, of the, the, the consultation, uh, in a Saturday weekend, he had fainted in his living room for five minutes. And the episode happened because he was presenting a red mark on his neck, increasing in size and reaching his face. And when he got up to check the redness on the bathroom mirror, he felt being unconscious for five minutes. And he was also complaining of shortness of breath. And he went to the emergency and several exams were made and nothing was found. And on the following day, he went to my office. Talking to the patient, I found that he was not feeling thirst during the day and was having difficulty in drinking water, what could be associated with a deficiency in the kidney energy meridian that was causing the shortness of breath. I restarted the treatment that I had been interrupted in December, orientated him to take the homeopathies described on the next slide in a single dose with increasing potencies every single day in an attempt to improve his energy level. As he was taking them every three days, I increased the intake to every day to improve the process of replenish the internal organs energy more quickly. And after, it was found that the three people who worked with him died from coronavirus infection. And the crystal-based medication and homeopathy, according to the constitutional homeopathy of the five elements based on traditional Chinese medicine, these are the medication I use to treat the lack of the energy on the chakras. For the liver energy deficiency, I use phosphorus. For the second chakra, that is the kidney, I use the natrium muriaticum. For the third chakra, I use uh, to treat the hard, uh, hard heart lack, lack of the energy, I use the sulfur. For the fourth chakra or the lung uh, lack of the energy, I use the silicia. For the fifth chakra of the spleen, I use the calcareo carbonica. And these are the crystal-based medication that I usually use to usually use with these homeopathies to replenish the energy of the chakra there that was in the lowest well level to increase the energy and consequently increase the new immune system of these patients. According to this law that you are looking at this slide, all drugs in high concentrations cause a reduction in the vital energy of the patient. And in traditional Chinese medicine, as I previously said, the energies are believed to the root of the health of the subject and are 
responsible for the immune system of the patient. And if you use the high concentrated medication, you will reduce even more the energy of the patient that is already low in this kind of patients. And that's why I'm using the high diluted medication to improve the organic process and uh, improve the energy point of view of the five massive organs that I demonstrated that it is in the lowest level and to improve the, the energy and improve the immune system of these patients. And if you improve the energy, you, you reduce the inflammatory process because it will reduce the production of the heat formation in this energy. And heat formation is responsible for the inflammatory process in many kinds of disease. And in this case, in the coronavirus infection. The intention of this presentation for your, you doctors is treating the coronavirus infection patients is the importance of the replenish of the energy of the chakras before because the energy is vital to the functioning of the body. If I the blood to circulate energy it's necessary and if there is a lack of the energy of the chakra there this is why it's happening in the intravascular coagulation because they don't have energy to circulate the blood in the vessel and the blood will stop to circulate. And if you give energy to this patient, you, the blood will not uh, stagnate in the vessel and will circulate normally and will reduce the consequence of the, the complications of the coronavirus infection. As Hippocrates said, he stated that disease was a natural process and that the signs and symptoms of the disease were caused by a natural reactions of the body to the disease process. And then it's not caused by the infection, the virus infection itself. I published a study entitled, Can Hospital Osteomyelites Be Treated Without the Use of Antibiotics? In which the use of two patients with hospital osteomyelites were taking antibiotics for the past two years with no improvement. Using the Iron Schultz law, the antibiotics were withdrawn and the patients present great improvement uh, when rebalanced the internal energy with Chinese dietary counseling and auricular acupuncture and apexir bloodletting. On only rebalanced the internal energy that they, they could achieve the cure without taking any antibiotics because the infection was only the consequence of the intake of the strong medication that was inducing more internal heat formation instead of treating the patients. Also, on the article of mine entitled, Why are diabetes patients still having hyperglycemia despite diet regulation, anti-glycemic medication, and insulin, published by this journal, uh, demonstrated that diabetes is related to the energy imbalances as well, it's related to inefficiency and heat retention. And uh, in coronavirus infection, we need to, uh, this kind of patient, they have uh, before the coronavirus infection, a heat retention leading to diabetes formation. And uh, if we, we don't treat these energy imbalances, treating the heat formation, the, they, that's why they will have more, um, more um, uh, serious development in the coronavirus infection, more serious evol evolution. In the article entitled Energy Alterations at the Underlying Cause at the Primary Hypertension, published in this journal, I also state that hypertension could be caused by the energy imbalances and the deficiency of the chakra's energy meridians and the replenish of the chakra's energy meridians using that drugs, that uh, homeopathies and high diluted medication was important to reduce the hypertension in, in hypertensive patients. And it was possible to take out the 
the medication, hypertension medications, only replenishing the internal organs energies. And this group of the patients that is considered high risk for coronavirus infection because they all have the same chakras energy deficiencies. The coronavirus infection they have, they could have the chakras energy deficiencies and the hypertension too, the hypertensive patients too. And with this previous published study, it's possible to draw a relation between the kind of patient more propensed to acquire coronavirus infection and had to be hospitalized due to this severe evolution according to their energy imbalances. Patients with previous serious illness, such as diabetes hypertension, may be prompted to be hospitalized due to coronavirus infection because they already have significant chakras energy deficiencies that may be harmed, the same chi that I explained before of these patients. Further, make it easier for the patients to be influenced by the invasion of the external pathogenic factors and the invasion of the virus. As I showed in this study presented before, the majority of the patients already present a significant energy deficiency on the chakras of or the five massive organs, meridians, before acquiring any disease, in this case, coronavirus infection. As this energy deficiency is already present, the invasion of the external pathogenic factors is easier. As they invade the body, they consume its remaining chi energy, and because of it, the organs collapse easier, as they are already working in with almost no energy, leading to severe evolution of the disease. And the conclusion of this study is that patients with chakras energy deficiencies who acquires coronavirus infections had to be treated with precautions because the use of high concentrated medications will reduce even more the energy of the chakras even more and leading to the formation of the internal heat and consequently more inflammatory process. And the use of high diluted medication for replenishing the chakras energy of these patients is very important to reduce the complications and mortality associated with coronavirus infections seen nowadays. This is a quote for importance. Natural forces within us are the true healers of the disease. And another quote from him, it is more important to know what sort of a person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. Thank you for your attention.